I've recently encountered a new genre called Soviet Wave. It's all about synths, mid-century futurism, and space exploration. Although this aesthetic movement seems to be pretty small in size and, and generally confined to unofficial YouTube playlists, there's an undeniable draw to it. Looking at the comments under these videos, you can feel that. They're devoid of the usual criticisms of the Soviet Union or socialism more broadly. In fact, they're overwhelmingly full of appreciation and nostalgia. It's as if everybody stopped and agreed for a moment that the dream, at least, was admirable. Contrast this with another wave genre, vaporwave, and we get a very different picture. Though there are many beautiful vaporwave tracks, the nostalgia this genre is built on is revealed to be hollow by everything from the liminal early computer graphics to the dead malls to the vocals, almost slushed beyond intelligibility. By pairing the degraded, sluggish music with a vacant, disjointed, and eerily devoid visual element, vaporwave effectively satirizes the glamorous trappings of the era it portrays. Of course, there are some who don't see it like that. Because when Vaporwave was first starting to break on the internet and it became like this big topic of discussion, obviously there was this kind of prevailing opinion that I think ended up winning out in the end that it's just a meme or it's silly or it's not, you know, supposed to be taken that seriously. But then there was also kind of this converse opinion that, no, wait a second, this is like, this has some kind of deep philosophical roots <laughs> in like communism, anti-capitalist, uh -huh. so on and so forth. And, you know, if, if that's where your political leanings lie, that's where your political leanings lie. But, you know, do you feel like there's anything kind of inherently political about, uh, th about the creation of, of vaporwave as an art form? Okay, so no. So yeah. I'm kind of, I mean, I think, I'm sure that there are people doing that. And Who do feel that way, of course. Yes. Yeah. And I just think that, you know, their music typically sucks and... <laughs> But it's hard to deny that Vaporwave as a genre has a definite anti-capitalist slant. Soviet Wave, on the other hand, upholds the mythology and aspirations and nostalgia it is commenting on. It reaffirms that even though the implementation of the vision was flawed at best, and the country that championed it is no longer around, the Soviet dream is still worth fighting for. In this way, Vaporwave and Soviet Wave are polar opposites. When I listen to Vaporwave, I get the sense of a glittery, decadent era that is ultimately hollow. But when I listen to Soviet Wave, I get the sense of a project that, while flawed and imperfect on its surface, is nevertheless pure and worthy at its core. Of course, the Soviet Union was not a perfect country. Perfect countries do not exist. We shouldn't excuse the real human rights abuses that happened there, nor should we pretend that their political and economic system was the pinnacle of efficiency and democratic freedom. I'm not trying to do that, but I don't think Soviet wave is either. For a genre with Soviet in its name, you'll see a remarkable lack of definite communist aesthetics. Soviet wave is not about military parades or massive Lenin statues. It's not a celebration of authoritarian state power. Instead, you'll see rockets, you'll see public transportation, you'll see optimistic visions for the future. When you listen to Soviet Wave, you're listening to the dream of a people, the dream of humanity working as one towards a better future. A dream that now lies dormant, as expressed by the melancholy nature of a lot of these tracks. Most of these songs don't have lyrics. And when they do, they're invariably in a language that I don't understand. But that's the genius of this genre. I don't think you have to understand anything. I think music is so important because of its power to convince without making an argument. And when I listen to Soviet Wave, I get it. At the end of the day, a large part of politics is just about framing. Whatever ideology can convincingly paint an inspiring vision of the future will naturally attract followers. And in this aesthetic battle, I think that we as leftists often portray ourselves in a way that does not really resonate with people. No one who's not already on your side is going to be convinced by a line of tanks or a slick uniform. That's a fascist game. But this, this has power. Even if it doesn't have a political project to coalesce around at this moment in history, the dream that Soviet wave represents is still alive. And in my opinion, it's the best aesthetic weapon we've got.
I really hope that this movement develops in the future. I hope to see more of this music and more of these visuals. A lot of leftist art is focused on negativity, critiquing imperialism, capitalism, and authoritarianism. And that's important, but I think a really powerful way to win people over is just to show them the type of world that we want to build. And I think that Soviet Wave does a really good job of making that case in a language that everyone can understand.